Amy, so I received an email from Austin that he is not able to join the meeting tonight. Amy, can you hear us? Okay. And Mark, you're still at, in the office mm -hmm. tonight? Okay. I just realized that was your office and not home. Oops. I will be right back. Okay. It's Marie. All right, my computer says it's seven o'clock. Should we start? Sure. Do we have enough people? Sure. We do. All right, then I call this meeting to order. Um, it's 7 p.m. on September 14. First, we have roll call. All right, Chair Amy Wilson. Present. Vice Chair Marie Hoda. Here. Scott Gilbert. Here. Sarah Harkness. Here. Guy Mason. Here. Andy Sakaris. Here. We have Inglewood Schools liaison Jen Hubbard. Here. Excuse, we have Austin Stryker. And right now absent, we have friend Ren Dunning and Council Member Dave Cuesta. Staff, we have Director Christina Underhill. 
and Library and Cultural Arts Manager, Mark Muller. All right, thank you. All right, now we have the approval of the minutes. Uh, thanks. Uh, I move to approve the minutes. I'll second. All right. All in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. 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 Any, any opposed? All right. So that passes. Um, we don't have any public commentary here, it doesn't look like. So then we can move on to the statistical report. Okay. Trying to remember if there were any statistical anomalies this month. Um, I don't think I don't think there was anything that really jumped out at me as I was looking through it. Um, I think we're still seeing uh, just that steadily increasing uh, physical items circulation. It's been nice. Uh, we're getting more and more traffic in the doors. Um, the physical visitors, though, we're not uh, we able to track that yet. Um, you know, as I mentioned, we got the new uh, traffic counter system. Uh, it's been mostly installed uh, when they went to activate it earlier this month. They uh, unfortunately found that one of the components wasn't working. Uh, so that was reinstalled Friday last week. Um, so we should have that up and running uh, where we'll be able to capture full data starting in October is my hope. I was really hoping to have full data for September. Um, but as long as we get that thing up and running, um, that, that we'll be able to start tracking those physical visitors again. Um, but yeah, the, the, the thing that jumped out at me this month when I was looking at the statistics uh, was just that we're continuing to see year over year increase in circulation of digital materials. So that's true, uh, Overdrive, Hoopla, Canopy, um, Access 360, of course, we've kind of decided to move away from. Um, and so the, but those, but those other three are kind of our big drivers there. And to me, that's great because 2020 was, you probably heard me say this before, it's gangbusters year for digital, that was big expansion. And not only have we retained that usage, but we're continuing to grow on it. So that's really cool. Um, definitely for us an indicator that we, we wanna keep investing in that sort of thing and um, keep promoting it. Um, so, Internet computer usage continues to just uh, uh, get busier and busier. So I think when we get those foot traffic numbers, we'll see that they're really, really uh, getting strong again, kind of putting us back in the pre-pandemic range. Um, and then the um, programming numbers uh, were down a little bit this month compared to last for children just because it was only half the month of summer reading programs. Um, we kind of wrapped up summer reading mid-August. Uh, most of the programs were done by early August. The mid-August mid was the last opportunity to pick up, um, and pick up prize packets, that sort of thing. So let me know if you have any questions about any of the statistics. Mark, if I can interrupt for a second, um, Dave Cuesta, Council Member Cuesta has joined the meeting. Okay. Thank you. What adult programs are you having right now? That's a great question. Let me, um, give me a second, I'll pull up a, pull my list. Off the top of my head, I'm gonna start, I'm just gonna start talking while I do this. Um, it was, you know, we're, we're doing book clubs, of course. We're doing um, uh, a lot of stuff like, when we look back to August, what this would have covered. So this would have been creative writing group um, the creative, we actually have one creative writing group that's doing really well and starting to see about you know, uh, eight to 10 people per session, which is about where you want one of those groups to be. Um, and that's successful enough that we're, that, that one's in on Wednesday evenings. It's so doing well enough that we're thinking about adding a daytime one as well. See if we can hit a different demographic, de different demographic with that. Um, we've got the um, memory cafe. We've got the French conversation circles um, that happen twice a month. We've got classic movie series, uh, the various book clubs. 
And we've got the trivia nights. Those have not been doing well. And so I actually talked to our programming librarian about um, ending those and, and rethinking the way we approach those in the future. Um, the nonviolent communication uh, series um let me see if there's anything i missed in that list so that that's what we had in, a, in another classic movie series um some of those are repeating uh we had also the sit in it group um so that that's what was represented in the august numbers there thanks mm -hmm. i never hear about some of those things oddly <laughs> enough the tri the trivia is the one thing i had heard of we try you know, they, I think they really thought they could make it work and it's, but we're never able to find an audience for it I really recommended with the trivia one um, that we look at doing something like like we look at books of the bar being a pretty successful book club and a lot of that I think is the venue it's just kind of a fun it's a great way for us to do you know um, uh, an, a book club out in the community at a place people want to be um, I could see doing trivia night hosted by the library um, in one of the Englewood, uh, you know, like an Englewood bar, or, you know, restaurant or something like that. Um, kind of the way Geeks Who Drink does it, you know, where, you know, we, we're, we're the outside entity who's hosting it in, in partnership with, with, the, with the bar. Um, we haven't really gone deep into exploring that yet, but I, I think it'd be really fun. And I think that's how we could build an audience for a program, the trivia program. What, what is, is the, the demographic that you're, oh, sorry, Scott that you're like hitting with these various groups. I'm sure it's all over the place, but. What's that? What was the oh, question? What is the demographic that you're hitting? I mean, these were all, those were all the adult programs. And so right, I right, think, right. yeah, um, my, my sense is, you know. All over the place? Oh yeah, all over the place. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't think, you know, I would say what you would expect from library programs, that's about, you know, we're not seeing like a huge turnout from the 2030 something demographic. Okay. We're seeing, you know, generally the, the, the library program attendance skews older. Okay. Yep. That answer. What is the creative writing group like? Um, they do... Uh, exercises they do um the, they kind of share what they what they're working on um i haven't attended a session but you can actually go to facebook and you can find recorded prompts of some of what they were doing um early on um uh mason good turner is our uh staff member who's been doing those and getting that off on its feet and so you can kind of get a sense of his personality and the kind of things that they that they do as exercises yeah okay thanks yeah, because because the, the, that was pro, the, you might have to go back a ways or do a search to find that because that was before we brought them back in person. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then the classic movie series is one where those those are getting a handful of people showing up. And the thing is, we have a license. Um, it's called Swank um, that allows us to show movies in the library as long as they're they belong to one of the you know some so many studios, which encompasses most of the major studios. Um, and so we don't have to do like we've been doing these classic movie series they're, they're they're sort of public domain, but we could also do ones that are more modern. And so that's something we're thinking about exploring as well. See if there's more interest there. Okay. Okay. All right, we are on to the action plan. Is that Amy? Is that okay? Yep. Sorry, my dog is barking, so I have <laughs> <You're> <laughs> trying all... to get that under control here. <laughs> oh, good. Yes. Okay. Sure right, not... the action plan. <laughs> all right, right on. All right. So, um, so looks like we're starting to talking about some of our communications and marketing. Um, so we got a couple of new library associates I mentioned last month. We we're training people up. So. Uh, Caitlin Degas is one who's helping us out with our Facebook page. She's starting an Instagram, um, and she's she's done some social media marketing in the past for uh, at, the, at, the, at the like university like student support level. Um, so she's got some interest in that. Um, so she's going to be helping us out. We also had a library staff attend the Celebrate Englewood community outreach event. Um, we met with tons of people. I was so happy to say ours was like a super popular booth. We were giving out, you know, various library swag and um, telling people, every everyone who was picking it up, just, hey, we're here representing the, you know, the rec center on Oxford and the library at the Civic Center on the first floor and you should come visit us. So um, uh, the best moment in that day for me was we had a, a lady who came by who um, seemed somewhat um, uh, mobility constrained. 
and she mentioned that she had been uh, you just signing up for a temporary card after temporary card because she wanted digital access to stuff on her iPad, but she was never able to make it down to the library. And if she had called, we would have worked this out with her, but I guess she had just thought like, oh, well, you know, she wasn't allowed to do that over the phone. And I happened to have my laptop with me. So I was able to just pull it out, you know, hotspot over to my phone and, and get her signed up for a permanent library card right there. So um, we're worth going to that event just, just to, and she's like, oh, this makes my week. So I was, <laughs> it was worth it just for that, just to help her out. Um, and then we're working uh, in coordination with the rest of PRLG to, to participate in the Inwood Block Party coming up this weekend, and, and hopefully we'll see you all there. Um, digital products, new digital product this month would be the Chilton's Library. So I don't know if you, you, you probably recall from here in the library, we had these giant shelves full of the um, automotive repair manuals um, going back decades and decades. Um, really gr a great resource, um, but they occupied a, a large footprint in the library. Um, so we decided to phase those out. Um, we've added the Chilton's library online um, to, it, it, it just digitizes all that. Um, so that's something that uh, we, it, we don't, you know, it's not the most popular thing we'll ever offer, but for the people who need it, it's, it's really great. If you ever need to figure out how to fix the you know, carburetor on a 1984 Chevy, you know, that's, that's the place to turn, so. Does the digital access go all the way back like the old uh, books did? It was quite a ways. I don't know if it, I, it would be impossible for me to say if it's a perfect one-to-one -one of the old books, but there's quite a bit there. All right, um, we did receive the ARPA grant um, that I mentioned, um, uh, I should say ARPA grant approval. Um, we attended the uh, Associated Training Workshop. Um, so we're starting to think about how we're gonna use those funds. Again, those are about pandemic recovery with a focus on bridging the digital divide. Um, we met with uh, All Copy, which is a printer copier vendor. Um, so we're, what we're looking at is replacing and upgrading the public printers, um, the multi the multifunction printers and copiers scanners. Uh, we get a lot of requests for fax. Uh, we get a lot of requests for scan to email. Um, and then we've uh, had a lot of in the last year, we've had a lot of issues with the reliability of, of the public printers. And this is something that is um, really just one of the most popular services we have. So we really want to make sure we have the best possible product in place for this. So I actually um, just today got uh, set up the appointment for next week to review um, their their recommendations. They 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 demonstrated um, sort of a replacement hardware and replacement software. Um, so we'll make a decision with, in coordination with the IT department about whether um, that's that's the right direction to go. But we really want to make sure we're providing the, the services that people are asking for. Um, we also met with the facilities project managers, um, so they want to replace carpet, uh, the library, the carpet throughout the library. Um, and so the goal is going to be to get the RFP process completed here in calendar year 2021, um, and then have installation take place um, in, in early 2022. Okay, yeah, then the local history, um, that local history note you've heard me mention before is starting to come together. We've got the, uh, we've finished tearing out the old shelving, or sorry, the old um, countertops, um, kind of did the wall repairs. We've got the new shelving mounted. Um, we've got the Colorado history collection moved into that space now. Um, so now there's just a little bit left of uh, sort of cleanup to do. Um, we uh, had last week, um, uh, uh, one of the people from EHPS who does graphic design work for the city come out and kind of do, take some measurements to start figuring out doing some uh, graphic design, uh, some decals, some posters, some stuff like that to kind of create the sort of mini museum that we're going for. Uh, we got the glass display cases in place. We just need to start getting it all uh, figured out. But like I said, you got the, uh, the Colorado history stuff has been moved over there. So you can start to see the space come together a little bit.
Oh yeah. Um, and then in August, we also launched the video games collection. Um, just a few items to begin with. Um, we didn't want to do too huge an initial investment as we start to explore whether this is going to work. Um, the, it, the video, the traditionally the problem with video games and libraries is that they have a really high loss rate. Uh, people will steal them if they're, you know, accessible to be stolen. Um, or they'll check them out and then they never get returned. And a lot of times uh, we suspected in the past when this would happen that, that they were getting um, resold on the secondhand market. Um, so there's, you know, GameStop, basically. You came, come buy a video game, they'll give you cash for it. So same thing would happen with DVDs, um, but since they were less valuable, it was less of a, you know, less of an acute problem with those. We've really seen um, the last couple of years a decline in uh, DVD theft rates. That's that's kind of you know universal for libraries right now, and a lot of that's just that the secondary market for that stuff is not what it used to be. Um, and so I, we suspect the same is going to be true for video games, which means that this is an opportunity to actually you know invest in that and and, and be able to offer those materials. So we um, we have about a dozen. Nintendo Switch games, about a dozen PlayStation 4 games. Um, we're going to probably expand to Xbox as well. Um, feedback from the people who are interested has been very positive, but we're really soft launching this. We're not drawing a lot of attention to it because we want to just see what happens with those first couple of Cirques. Do they come back to us? Um, and then uh, we, we've got to set up so that the games themselves, the disc, the valuable part it, are held behind the counter so that it's not like somebody could just walk in and grab them and walk out and then the whole collection is gone. Um, so we think we're, you know, handling this in a smart way. Um, they're also right now, um, it's funny, they're limited to circulate only here at Englewood. You have to be an Englewood patron to check them out. Um, they won't go to a Marmot library. They won't go to go out via prospect or anything like that. We, we can change that. Um, but right now we want to keep it, keep it in house. Um, but apparently some of the, uh, bibliographic records are visible to patrons from other libraries because I looked and saw one of them already had like 14 holds from other library patrons. I'm just like, oh, I'm sorry, that's that's not going to happen. So <laughs> um, yeah, we'll, we'll, I'll keep in the loop on how this one's doing. I'm, I'm really optimistic that this will that this will do well, especially once we feel confident that we can start really promoting it. And when I say promoting it, I mean, in the library, like shelving that calls attention to it. You probably saw in the ledger that it was the first item there. So we, we wanted to make people aware of it. Okay, and then the last thing in the action plan here is just to update about Summer Reading 21. We, we uh, the, 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 the children's team has prepped the story time room. Uh, I'm sorry, this is so weird to be thinking about August because we're, we're already in mid-September. Um, and uh, they're back to in-person story times now. They were doing a lot of work in the second half of August to get that story time room ready. Remember, for a year and a half, it was the video production studio for all the Facebook uh, live stuff that they were doing, programs and story times. And so they, 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 they spent a long time getting that cleaned up. Um, and then the final stats for summer reading program 21, uh, we had 763 kids registered with a 54% completion rate. And, you know, like I mentioned at a previous board meeting, above 50%, we feel really good about. So that's a, we, those were good numbers for us. So we, we're really happy with that. Um, I don't have, I, I, we, I did the presentation last time about comparing to previous years. So I don't have those numbers off, off, offhand right now. Before we leave the topic, hey, I wanted to ask um, on the uh, on the auto repair manuals, are those available remotely? Um, yes. Can, yeah. Okay. And are the yeah. pages are the pages printable? Yeah, I believe so. Um, yeah, they're yeah. Oh yeah. Um, so if you go to our website, englewoodco.gov/library, um, look for the research databases. Uh, and then there's a basically a series of options that you'll see. There's like a sort of an accordion box, they call it. Mm -hmm. And one of them is auto repair. Um, okay. And then Chilton's is the one I recommend. Um, and you should, uh, if you're accessing it remotely, you will probably need to authenticate using your library card. Um, or this may be a Gale database. I think what it says is use the password. There's like a password and it says right there on the link, like use password pirates. And so just <laughs> type in that password. If you're here in house, you, it bypasses the password. Okay. Um, uh, and then you'll be able to uh, poke around, you know, I think it asks you to specify like 
you know, obviously make model, you know, year. Um, and then, you know, are you trying to do, are you looking for the maintenance schedule? Are you looking for to do repairs? And then it kind of, as you drill down in the menus, you get to the actual information you're looking for, wiring diagrams, that sort of thing. And there's a little print button on the page. Okay. And people in the library can print it there if needed. Correct. Right? That's correct. Wow. Well, that yeah. is pretty handy. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a great, yeah. it's a great way to free up, you know, 30 square feet of the library too. So or, yeah. or whatever it ends up being. Yeah. Yeah. Or script shelving specifically. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Any other questions for the action plan? No? All right, next up we have new business. All right, patron code of condo provisions. Um, yeah, I actually have, okay. So let me break out a full screen here for a second. All right, I have another version of this document that includes some of the revisions that you gave, but I'll just talk through them because they're really, there were a handful and they were, they were valuable, but, uh, but it's not so different that it will fundamentally change the conversation. Um, so this comes as um, the city attorney's office is reviewing the trespass ordinances. Um, and so I don't know the nature of what the trespass ordinance review is, but I do know that I was, uh, that one of the um, people in the city attorney's office reached out to me uh, with these uh, suggested changes to the patron code of conduct. And those are what you see in red here. Um, and then you all provided additional input. Um, and what, so what I'm gonna send back to city attorney's office includes um, where it says smoking of any kind. Uh, we're, gonna add, we're gonna suggest adding smoking or vaping of any kind. Um, a little down below where it says leaving young children under the age of blank. We've determined that the, probably the, the age we think of as correct is 12 because at the age of 12, um, somebody is able to be a teen volunteer for us. And so obviously the teen volunteers can stay in the library uh, unattended. Uh, a little bit below that, we have the one of improper clothing. Uh, it should be reworded to say improper clothing, including that which exposes male or female genitalia or a failure to wear short shoes or a shirt. Just kind of cleaning that sentence up a bit. Um, and then there was um, the suggestion that there was, I think it was Guy, you mentioned that there was nothing about weapons in here. Um, this actually came up last week in the library where um, we briefly thought that there was somebody who may have brought a firearm into the library. Um, upon further review, we determined that it, he was just holding a cane or he had a, you know, he had like part of a cane visible. Um, it's, it's hard to explain, but um, point is um, the, I, I believe Christina, you could maybe speak to this better than I can because you, you talked to Dugan and city attorney's office. He was going to do some research about weapons in libraries. Is that correct? Correct. Um, it sounds like some of the legal uh, ramifications with weapons, uh, firearms and such uh, have changed recently within the last few years. Um, he was asking, the attorney was asking if uh, we had any signage on the doors saying, you know, no weapons, firearms allowed in the library. And we do not. And in fact, there's no signage on any of the doors going into the city hall, city center area. And so uh, the research is continuing. It's not going to happen overnight because there uh, could be some pushback. Uh, if we do something that technically is not legal to do based off of other court cases and things that have happened. And so um, this is all a work in progress, just like Mark mentioned with the trespassing ordinance, um, when can we trespass people and when we cannot. So that it's all being researched for our, by our legal team currently, but definitely a concern that we have. And like Mark mentioned last week, it was a foldable cane, I believe, that was uh, in the person's like waistband. They folded it up and put it in. So it actually looked like a gun handle when we reviewed the, um, the footage that was taken in the library uh, from the surveillance cameras. Luckily it was not, we realized it was a cane after the fact, but still glad we, we had that issue come up so we could start address, addressing things such as that. Yeah. Um, do you, you do have a prohibition against weapons in the courtrooms upstairs, don't you? Yes, and that's on those doors upstairs. So 
And of course, we've got the metal detectors up there and everything. So it's something that may be expanded to the whole city center area um, in that building, including the library. Um, the other one you mentioned, Guy, I think was yelling. Um, so, you know, the, the, we don't really cover that. I think that would be um, under uh, verbal harassment. Um, but I, I didn't, I didn't know if we needed to call that out as its own uh, bullet here. Um, but I appreciated the. Where were you? Go ahead. I was just saying it. It seems like a much higher bar to have harassment versus. Um, just yelling, but I mean, there could be yeah, a disability it, issue, I suppose, too. It's, it's tough because it's like somewhere between verbal harassment and the unreasonably loud conversations, right? <laughs> as, as a practical matter, I think when behavior gets to that point, it's not hard for us to, to take action. We, you know, it's, uh, there's various ways I think the code of conduct backs up our, our you know, desire to be able to um, maintain order in the library. Um, so I, I think we're okay on that one, but I really do genuinely appreciate the suggestion. Was there anything I missed? Oh, somebody, oh, panhandling. I'm sorry, there, that, I, because I scratched it out instead of adding something in, I didn't uh, mention it. Um, so, so I think Amy pointed out that panhandling is in there twice, um, as is soliciting, um, uh, the bullet point solicitation or panhandling. Um, then also below gambling, soliciting, or panhandling. So we're going to try to yeah uh, clean up that redundancy. And this is all going back to the city attorney's office. This correct? is going to go back to the city attorney's office. Yeah, this is ultimately their discretion. Okay. All right. Any other questions about that, or does it look okay? Do we need to do anything with it other than? We're just advising, right? I don't think we make a motion on this. Yeah, I don't either. Okay, well then we have, um, is that all the new business or did you guys have anything else that's not on the agenda? Oh, um, have we um, gone through to the, the discretionary spending for the year or is there um, an amount remaining? I think there was still some left. I think so too. I think we spent I, 1500. Um, okay. Yeah, I think that's right. Cause I know, I mean, some years we, we get to the December meeting and it's yeah. like, oh boy, we, yeah. we better buy 1500 gumballs or something, you know? So, <laughs> so maybe we could get the, get some ideas earlier, um, you know, maybe to consider next time or something so that we're not jammed up. Yeah. Let's do that. Would you, would you like us to provide a recommendation or do you want to do that amongst yeah, yourselves? Yeah. Yeah. I would recommendation love to hear from you. Great. Okay. Well, do you guys and I think the block party, I know it's coming up way too soon, probably, but maybe you guys could use some money for that. Well, we did spend a fair bit on um, some more, you know, giveaways and stuff to, you know, kind of engage the kids. So, you know, but we're definitely. But yeah, it would be a little late to do more. But uh, yeah, I think that I suspect that after the block party, we'll need to uh, resupply. So maybe we can go down that road too. That sounds good, Debbie. Can you add that to um, old business for next month, so we remember to go over it? I will. Thank you. Any other new business things we need to talk about? All right, old business, we have the October library board meeting. So we've been just kind of um, discussing whether we wanna go back in person. I will say I won't be here next month. Um, I hope Marie will be able to be here next month. I will be here next sure. month. Okay, good, um, thanks. I so prepare. I'm warning you now, I won't be there. <laughs> no problem. Um, so, uh, you know, on that note, I don't really care if you guys meet in person or not. <laughs> But I think there was some hesitation still to go yeah. back. I've been hearing that from, it seems like everybody. I don't know if we want to vote on it again or just kind of not worry about it till the first of the year. What is everybody's feelings on this? <laughs> well, to me, the numbers are changing so fast that um, I, I think making a plan for a month from now 
could be like banking on the weather a month from now you know it's yeah i just think it's still too uncertain i think um, we to... should just stick with virtual well it's yeah, easy. i agree you know and winter's coming nobody wants yeah. to go out in the snow for these things and it's dark yeah. pretty soon i hated it when we used to have to be there in the dark yeah i, I do miss meeting in person i i really do I, I just don't think the the sentiment is i, I don't think yeah. the sentiment is there yet maybe i'm incorrect well, let's hold off until January then. Would that be okay with everybody? Do we need to vote on that or can we just agree on it? Does anyone know? I think we need to vote on it. Okay. So um, I propose that we discuss this again in January and meet online until January. Until the, and including the January meeting where we will discuss it again. That is my motion. I'll, I'll second that. Okay. okay. All right. Beat me to it. <laughs> so um, is, is all in favor? Aye. 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 Can't see everyone there, but um, any opposed to that? No? OK. All right, so that passes then. We'll discuss it again in January. Sounds good. Um, and then next on old business, we have the future capital projects from Christine. Yeah, so I'm actually going to pitch it to Mark because we had the CalCon, um, the conference last week that one of our staff members went to, and there's a lot of new cool stuff uh, coming out for libraries. So Mark, do you want to cover a few of the items that she brought back ideas from? Yeah, some of it would, um, yeah, the, the one that specifically would be capital project is going to be, um, we were looking at some of the uh, options around things like um, library vending machines so in other words like big like you a big machine we could set up in Mally center that would have um library books inside of it and patrons would be able to check out those books um which i think would just be really cool um that's the sort of thing that's only possible though if you have rfid um so rfid is like a small sticker that you could put inside of each of your books a lot of libraries use this and it uh, really expedites the checkout process. So like, for example, I know Jefferson County, or you take your books to, to big old stack of kids books, you set it on the checkout counter, you log in and it just reads them all right. And it checks all 20 books out all at once. Um, so, you know, converting our collection to RFID is one of those, you know, per perpetually, you know, a few years down the road to do items. Um, but it would really enable us to um, do some of these cool new, you know, something cool like putting a library book vending machine in the Mally Center. For, uh, that's that's the, the one that we saw at the CalCon where we were just like, oh my gosh, we'd love to do that. Um, obviously, we could do things like um, expedited uh, materials handling. So you could check in your materials much quicker. You could check out materials much quicker. Save staff time. I don't know. I would want to uh, convey the impression that we'd see a huge staff savings on this. Some li large library systems might. For us, the operation is smaller, and so I don't know that it necessarily would. I want to be realistic about that. Um, usually the cost of implementation on something like this uh, traditionally is you, you ballpark about a dollar per item for your whole collection. So it gets pretty expensive. You know, you, you, you see the statistical report, we have roughly 58,000 items in the collection. Um, so I don't know that this is something I'd necessarily want to jump on tomorrow, um, but I think it's something that we should consider doing in advance of for example, I wouldn't want us, if, if eventually the city of Englewood is going to build a new library, um, you want to have this done prop before you before you build your new facility because you want to plan your you know, materials returned around having um, the RFID machine to check in the incoming materials automatically. So just something I wanted to put out there to all of you. Um, and that's, that's my sort of pitch. My yeah, pitch with an asterisk. I love that idea. I've long thought that vending machines would be great. I never could imagine how they could work, but I've always thought that was an awesome idea. And the fact that the library is, there's a good chance it'll move. I think anything that can move with it makes the most sense rather than trying to invest in what we already have. I yeah, think that's, that's an yeah. excellent idea. 
Does anyone have any additional ideas for capital projects? I did add new library to the list of capital projects. <laughs> 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 so yeah. Um, I'll just read off what we've got. So um, uh, technology infrastructure, uh, higher speed internet, solar power to the library. That would probably be if we do a new build. There is solar on the building we currently are in. Not sure how it all hooks up and what's it's actually what it's actually feeding, but we are utilizing it at the city center. 3D printers, vinyl cutters, laser cutters, more of a maker space. Um, tables, infrastructure items to help support that maker space. Uh, replacing the book drops. Uh, I added the book vending machine on there. I think it's a cool idea in the new library. So again, if you have ideas, please share them during these meetings. You can always, you know, if you have that 2 a.m. Oh my gosh, I thought of the best idea ever. Shoot us an email and I'll add it to the list. So. Hey, Mark, on the uh, RFIDs for the books, you mentioned it's about a buck uh, an item. Is that yeah. just for the RFID tag and then staff has to... Um, apply them to each item or does, no, that, that's, that's, or does the service come in and put all those uh, tags on? Great question, Dave. That, that's the estimated total cost for implementation. So really I, the ID tags have gone down in price over time. The last estimate I've heard was about 20 cents per tag. Yeah, so so all the extra costs are you know factoring in the labor uh, to, to actually get it done. Very good, thank you. Yeah. In rough estimate, what would that sort of look like cost-wise? Uh, well, like I said, if, if we're estimating about a dollar an item, and again, this is real ballpark. I need sure. to yeah, work right. with the vendor. Um, you know, we're, we have about 58,000 items. So okay. 58, about $58,000. Okay. Yeah. Any other commentary on that? All right, thanks. Um, you know, I, I, I just got to ask, how does a book vending machine work? I mean, it doesn't like come out on a coil and get stuck and you have to shake the machine and stuff, right? I, that's, uh, I'll have, I don't know, Scott. Okay. I guess that's a great question. <laughs> I hope I wasn't the staff member who got to go to CalCon, so I didn't get yeah. to see it up close. Okay. Yeah. I'm curious. I would love to see it. Yeah, it sounds uh, like a great they, idea. I think they have one at South Glen, the streets at South Glen. Um, okay. I think that's the only one in the area that I don't know about that time. There may also be one at the foothill, uh, one of the foothills rec centers. Um, okay. Yeah, let's we'll do a field trip sometime. I will do <laughs> that. Like, Thanks. Is the one in Southland like outside the library, so you like can go anytime? I think that's right. Yeah. Oh, I'll have to look next time. I'm down there all the time. I'll take a look. Let, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's see what it's like. I haven't been over there. I'll send pictures. <laughs> okay. Cool. <laughs> All right, next up we have staff choice. I'll just talk about two events we have coming up and Mark can fill in what I missed. Uh, so the block party is this coming Saturday uh, from three to 9 p.m. in the 3400 block of Broadway. It's gonna be an excellent event. We've got a huge stage and a big LED TV type screen that's gonna mirror what's going on in the stage so you won't miss anything. Beer garden, tons of booths. Most of the restaurants are gonna be open on Broadway serving food you can bring out to the event. So it should be a really fun time this Saturday. And then on Wednesday, September 29th, we have a Homeless Connect event at Cushing Park. And that's gonna be from uh, 10 a.m. until 12 p.m. There's 25 different partners registered to participate in the event. Uh, some of the sponsors are Tri-County Health, the City of Inglewood, of course, uh, Change the Trend, Craig Hospital, All Health, and Integrated Family Services. There's a huge list of partners that are going to join us. And we've been doing outreach. The library is helping out, uh, pass out these little, little bitty flyers um, that talk about the event. And hopefully we can get some of the individuals experiencing homeless to come over. Uh, I believe there's going to be a dentist on site, haircuts, a uh, shower trailer, a way to do laundry while you're there. Um, so it's going to really hopefully help some of these individuals out, uh, get some resources to um, potentially get off the streets. And that's really the goal. And we know there's a lot of people that are experiencing homeless that they need to get off the streets. And that is one of their goals is to get a job and do just that thing. So uh, this is the first time we're doing this. We are anticipating we'll continue to do it. It might be a biannual event. It may happen more often. Uh, we are in talks with the uh, shower trailer and also the uh, laundry 
uh, to do more often. It was one request that uh, one of the librarians had back when I started with the city of how do we get this? Um, I don't know about you, but I always think about, you know, after you go off on a camping trip, a long weekend and the shower has never felt better. So I can only imagine individuals who don't get a shower on a daily basis that need it, how great that must be for them. So we're really happy to be offering this. We hope for a good turnout. Um, if we can send this flyer out to you all, so feel free to forward on to anyone, you know, that might want to um, participate as a vendor or exhibitor um, to help uh, individuals out. Or if you run into people that are experiencing homelessness, um, we can share the information with them to get them over to Cushing Park, hopefully, and we can get them some help. That's all I have. I think she covered everything. <laughs> Yeah, if you could please forward that, that would be great. Oh, and another big piece, we are providing food. So anybody that comes, um, we'll feed them when they get there. And there's some of the agencies that will be out there that actually have some to-go items so they can take it with them to eat later on as well. What's the outreach for that, Christina? Like, how are you getting the word out besides um, that? It's, it's all the partners. So okay. Um, we've literally, our open space manager, myself, Mark, our uh, recreation manager, We've been going around and passing these little flyers out. Um, you know, I, I walk to go get coffee or lunch or something and see somebody and just say, hey, there's a flyer for something that's coming up if you're interested and share with your friends. So um, so a lot is just face-to-face, uh, -face, but uh, yeah. all the partnering agencies are sharing as well. That's awesome. All right, anything else for staff's choice? Well, Jen, what's your update, Jen? Not much of an update. Um, school's going well. Everybody's, uh, you know, in school. We are still wearing masks and such. Um, and we have one of the lowest case counts um, in the county um, because we did, we started with masks and they're continuing with masks. So um, we're keeping as many kids in school on a regular basis as possible. Um, other than that, you know, we're just doing our thing. You know, everybody's Happy and healthy. <laughs> I tell you, it makes me, it cheers me up every morning at eight o'clock. I live about a block and a half from Clayton. And when I hear the mom Grand Prix going by out here, <laughs> it just, it just puts a big smile on my face. So I, I'm glad, I'm glad school's back in. Yeah, no, it's, it's, I know we're, we're happy to see everybody back. Um, and I'm sure parents are glad to have kids back in school as well. Um, but uh, yeah, everybody's doing really well. All right, board members choice. I don't really have anything. I was just going to say about the, for the book vending machines, if you go to, um, I don't see any, we don't have a chat here, but you go to bookriot.com slash book hyphen vending hyphen machines. There's a article on it. Oh, cool. And yeah, they Thanks. do actually have the little, they do look like regular candy machines with the <laughs> foils. I vaguely remember I actually presented something on book vending machines when I was in library school a long time ago. <laughs> so I guess maybe they've been around. Either that or I made it up. <laughs> I just wanted to say that we went to the um, little neighborhood food truck thing two weeks ago in Bellevue Park. Um, and it was great. I know that the last one for the year is on Thursday and it's ice cream only. Sweet Cow is coming to Rotolo Park and we'll be there, but I just think it's a really cool thing that the city's been doing. So hopefully be on the lookout next summer. What time is it on Thursday at Rotolo? It you starts know? at four. So okay. we're going to be having ice cream before dinner. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. okay. Yeah. Cool. I finally shelled out five bucks for some uh, headphones <laughs> instead of instead of those annoying earbuds I kept having to push back in. So I feel uh, I feel all outfitted for the occasion now. Congratulations! Yeah, I know. I feel pretty special. <laughs> Anyone else? No. All right. Well, that's all we have then. So um, it's 745 and we can adjourn this meeting. Okay. Good seeing right. everybody. See Take care. Good to see you. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Have a good night. Thanks. Bye. Bye.